Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm John M0JPI. I wanted to talk today about the Red Pattaya. It's a single board computer. Um, it's got a um, FPGA with a dual core ARM processors on it, and it's also got um, fast analog to digital and digital to analog converters. Um, it can be used as for loads of different things. So, um, it can be used as a software defined radio, although this is the um, STEM Lab 125 14 bit version. Um, there is a 16 bit version which is more optimized as a software defined radio, but I got this back in 2016, so I've had it for a while. This was the first version there at that time, this was the only version I had. Um, but this is a really good. Um, experimentation and um, training tool. Um, it's got open source software so you can adjust it to do whatever you want it to do. Um, it's got high impedance inputs and 15 ohm outputs so this one is more designed for test and measurement um, although you can attach um, transformers to it uh, which I have. Um, so you can attach these to the front of the inputs to bring it down to 58 ohm inputs. Um, it's got a whole load of different um, features for makers and, and digital electronics. It's got um, four analog inputs and it's got four analog outputs at a slow speed. Um, so the fast speed is 125 mega samples per second. So that's these SMA ports here. Um, the slow speed is one mega sample per second, which is still fast, it's still a lot faster than a lot of um, experimentation maker boards. Um, and it's got eight differential I.O. ports, or you can double those and have them not differential. Um, so it's got quite a lot of analog um, inputs, outputs, and digital inputs and outputs. Um, and it's got a Xilinx um, system on a chip in the centre here under the heatsink, and it's got um, Gigabit Ethernet. So there's quite a lot of interesting um, features that this board has. Um, and it's got loads of different software applications. We'll have a look at the software applications next. So this is how I set up my Red Pattaya. My Red Pattaya just came like this. I have ordered the case, which I might have another video about how that fits together. But it doesn't need a case. It has feet on its own and it has got a heatsink, so it'll work fine, just like that. I think it just looks better with the case. But, um, I got the diagnostic kit, which does come with oscilloscope probes, and it also comes with adapters as well. So it comes with these BNC to SMA adapters. For my demonstration, I've set the jumpers to be on the low voltage mode, which is one volts. They operate on 20 volts on the high voltage mode. So we'll just connect the SMA connectors. And I have bought my own cable which just connects. This is for the output so that I can um, have jumper leads on the output. So I've got one oscilloscope probe for the input one and then one for input two. Apparently when you're connecting SMA connectors you should keep the end the same and just twist the barrel in the middle. That's apparently the best way of doing it. I just do them hand tight. You can, some of the experts have got uh, special torque wrenches for these. They can get the exact amount of torque, but I just do it hand tight. Apparently it is important that you do not touch the end connector of the SMA because it affects the uh, performance, but mainly above the 50 megahertz that the Repetite operates, so it's not really a big problem, but if you're operating at high, higher speeds, it might be. So for this, I'm going to use these uh, jumper settings. I'm just going to stick another jumper into it, then connect all the negatives together. So just the clips from the oscilloscopes, just clip all those together to the negative and then for the positives that's coming out of the output connect a jumper and then again connect the two 
out to the jumper. And that was the simple setup that I had for the uh, red tire demonstration. I then connected the Ethernet port, and then powered the red tire. So there's two ports. This is the power, and this is the data one. It does say on the back power, and then console con. So that's the power. The lights light up when you've got power. And there is a heartbeat as well. So once it's booted, so this is the SD card which has got the operating system on it. Once it's booted, you will get this red flashing heartbeat that shows that it's working. The um, gold, yellow, amber LED that is showing that you've got access to the SD card. So it's a bit like the hard disk flashing light on your computer or SSD. So that's what the other one is showing. The other LEDs are for, just for you to program, so you can program the only LEDs if you want to. So we've got expansion connectors here. Uh, we've got the chip itself. We've got 512 megabytes of RAM, fast analog and in, analog inputs and outputs. And then this is if you want to synchronize the clocks to another web tire board. Um, that's it on the back. It's a complicated circuit board, and it's multi-layered. The Webpatia has different applications. They all appear as a web page. You can access it by going to the web page that's based on the MAC address of your Webpatia. There is a sticker on the Webpatia's Ethernet port that tells you what the address is. Um, this address is the same even if the red tire is on Wi-Fi where it will be using a Wi-Fi adapter's MAC address but it's still used as the Ethernet port MAC address as its host name. If you want to look at the settings and your network configuration, if you go to System it will show you all the network settings. There is a network manager in here that shows you your wired connection and also shows you your wireless connection. If you wanted to do wireless, you could plug a Wi-Fi dongle in. It will connect via DHCP or you could set up a static IP address if you wanted to as well. So the main application or the first application you can use is the oscilloscope and signal generator. They are one combined application. Um, as it says on the top, um, my web tire is the first web tire that came out so it supports 125 mega samples per second and it's got two 14-bit um, um, oscilloscope inputs and it's also got two outputs that can operate at the end at the same rate and the same resolution. So here's an example of what happens if you connect your inputs and your outputs together. So I've got input one, input two, and output um, one connected together. Just change it to output one. Oops, turn it off. Turn on output one on. This looks interesting. Um, so, we zoom out a bit, that's better, there we go, right, uh, <laughs> right, each of the different channels, you click on the channel to change the time base and the voltage settings, there we go. And there's a fine tune and then there's a normal. Um, it shows you down here what the voltages per division are on each of the channels and then here it shows you um, the trigger settings and the time division settings. Um, there's different options for trigger so you can have a trigger on the rising edge, you can have a trigger on the falling edge, looks different. You can have it on trigger on input one or input two which for me should look the same. You can have an external trigger um, which it hasn't got connected on my setup. Um, you can change the triggering level, 
Um, you can have it like a one shot, or you can have it continue chugging, or you can have it decide itself what it should be. Um, it has got a circular buffer, so you can um, change the trigger and it'll look at before or after the waveform. Um, what else can we do on here? Oh, you can set the probe attenuation settings. Um, so I got the Red Pattaya um, diagnostic toolkit or diagnostic kit, and it's got um, two oscilloscope probes, and they have got attenuation options on the probe itself, so you can set um, an attenuator or you can leave it as it is. Um, the inputs for the web pattaya, uh, the version that I've got, which is the 14-bit um, stamp lab, the, by default they have got high impedance inputs. Um, they've got two jumpers settings on them, so you can have the low voltage or the high voltage jumper settings. Uh, mine is at uh, low voltage jumper settings. Um, I think the maximum or low voltage is one volt input, I think. Um, you can export it as a graph, you can export it as, as it comes up this picture, here we go, um, or you can imp export it as a um, CSV file as well. Um, you can calibrate it, although I don't have a calibrated voltage source to do that uh, in my setup at home. Um, you can also see the system information which appears down the bottom, how many frames per second, um, which for this application doesn't seem to be showing. Uh, oh, is it because I'm on auto? Wait a minute. No. <laughs> you can see uh, how much data it's getting, presumably that's from the FPGA, um, how much CPU load is, which will be the ARM, there's two ARM cores in there, and how much memory it's got um, available and how much it's using. Um, it's got 512 megabytes of RAM, so this must be some of it being used by the system. Um, we can auto scale, which I haven't found use, didn't really work. Uh, what's up in there? Looks like my channel one has disappeared. Oh no. Ah! Was it on top of it? Yeah. Ha! Right. Well, I think when it auto scaled. It was on top of the other channel, so you can't see it. Right, okay. Um, so that's also scaling. You can scale manually, as I said, and you can do a fine adjustment where you can really get a lot of control. Like that. Uh, that's all I can really show you on the oscilloscope and the signal generator. There's a logic analyzer, which I'll do a separate video on. Um, that requires extra accessories, uh, which Vepatia have sent me um, to try out. Um, I did buy the um, Vepatia board and I've bought the Vector Network Analyzer, um, but Vepatia have sent me the Logic Analyzer to see if I can um, do a review of them. So I'll do that later on. Um, the there is I'll do another video on this as well. The SDR transceiver, which is one of the interesting things that I wanted to advertise for, it doesn't have any front end on the website. You have to open up a separate application. You have to open up HP uh, SDR, and that's where the front end would be. Um, similar kind of thing with Vector Analyzer. So the Vector Network Analyzer has its own um, application. There's a Windows version and there's a Mac version. Um, and their standalone applications, but most of these applications they run in the web browser. So we've also got a Bode analyzer. I don't really have a setup for that yet. I might test that out later. Um, so that's going to 
analyze equipment under test, but I remember I just got the inputs and the outputs connected to each other, so it's not giving you much. Um, what else have we got? We've got an LRC meter, but that requires um, the additional hardware, which I haven't got. So I can't really show you much about that. That's what the user interface would look like. Um, there is a frequency analyzer, and then at the bottom here, we've got a waterfall display for it. Um, that looks like you can actually use the signal generator on that as well. Interesting. Oh, that's new. Ah, so if I turn on the signal generator, then you can see the harmonics that are generated by the signal generator. That's interesting. Yeah, and I should change the frequency. So um, the Vepatire by itself is um, it's rated for up to 50 megahertz um, frequency. Um, so it would be interesting. You could have a look at different filtering between the input and the output, and you could see what harmonics were generated and things like that. That's quite interesting. Uh, hmm. Stop that. So that's another interesting um, application. Could be have a lot of radio uses there. Um, this. Red Pattaya store just opens the Red Pattaya website. Um, it, it doesn't. It takes you out of your local um, Red Pattaya build. Uh, there's also a marketplace. The applications on here are free, but these are different applications that people have um, made and they've uploaded onto the um, Red Pattaya marketplace. So that's quite good. Um, you can send feedback to Repetire. This just opens up an email link. Um, I've shown you the system setting. There is, as well as the network manager, there is um, an operating system updater. So this will um, check what operating system version you've got, and then it'll offer an update. Now, I've, there's no difference there between them, so there's no point in applying that. So it's got an auto update system. There's a development system, so you, it is an open source software, so you can look at the sources for the software. Um, there's a website that's got documentation, so this is the documentation website. Um, it's got quite a lot of detail on here. Um, it looks quite short, but you click on it and there's a lot of detail. So if you go, for example, to the software developer guide, um, there's all sorts of different settings that, and shows you how the Vepatire system actually works um, and how to add your own applications. Um, if you wanted to just look at the um, applications, so for example, um, how do I set up a load analyzer? It will show you um, how the applications work and it will also show you the kind of setup that you need, um, the hardware setup and how you connect your cables. So you can see here, this is a kind of calibration setup for the Bode analyzer, um, which I haven't set up yet. So that's quite quite a good setup. Um, so if I go back to my web attire, um, we can program in Python as well. So this is running locally. Um, on the web attire and you can access the different um, analog inputs outputs and use some of the applications as well um, this is quite a good application which I may do a different video on later on uh, there's also FPGA examples as well how to develop for the actual Xilinx Zinc FPGA and the, all the details are on this readthedocs.io website um, the links from the website itself. You can do a uh, reboot 
you don't really need to do a shutdown of the web attire. Um, all of the programs and the applications stored on the SD card. Um, you can go, it, there is also, you can, it all runs a Linux operating system, so you can access the Linux um, command line and you could do a shutdown if you wanted to from there. Uh, you, can, you can access it via SSH. I can show you a little bit about the SSH um, setup next if you want. So this is my putty configuration. Um, I've already loaded the IP address set up for the web attire. Um, you can access it via Wi-Fi or you can have it via Ethernet. You could also um, plug it in a USB um, connection into the terminal. There's three main ways of connecting to the web attire to get the command line. The first one and probably if you don't have any networking because you've got some kind of network setup needs to be done you could connect via a usb and it gives you a serial connection that's useful because there's two usb micro usb ports on the web attire one is for power and then the second one is for this serial connection. You can use it to send serial data to other programs if you want to do as well. I'm using the Ethernet connection because I already had the Ethernet connection connected to get web, web pages and all of its applications. You could also do it by Wi-Fi as well. All of those options are available to you. I'm using the root logon. There is other logons as well. The web attire is based on Ubuntu Linux. This is using our long-term support edition as well as Linux has also got its own bespoke software, that's version 0.98. All of this software is open source software, so you can get the source code and you can change it. And this is one of the things that I like about my Bataille. Um Amateur Radio is about experimentation, self-learning. If it's open source, that allows you to do that and allows you to change it and do your own experiments. The root home directory doesn't have anything in by default. The top level hierarchy is the same as you would get in a lot of other single board computers. For example, the Raspberry Pi. It does have some differences. The main difference is that you can program the FPGA from the Linux command line. So there's two parts in the main chip. There's the dual core ARM processors, and then there's also this FPGA fabric. And then there's the separate analog to digital, digital to analog chips as well on the board. If you go to the um, options directory, so options, Reptira, FPGA, you can see various different FPGA bit streams. These are just part of the, F, uh, the web attire software. Uh, you can write those bit streams to the FPGA while Linux is running without rebooting. So this cat command does that. So I've now written the FPGA software into the FPGA device. Uh, there are different versions, so you can run I can put in version 0.93, and I could put in 0.94, or I could put the LA, which I'm guessing is the latest version, into the FPGA, and you can see it's almost instant that it writes the FPGA configuration. So that's quite useful. Everything is open source, including the FPGA bitstream, so you can modify it, and you could create your own FPGA bitstream, and you could run it just like this. And in fact, you could actually have multiple FPGA bitstreams and you could write them on the fly. So you could make a fully developed application with a web attire if you wanted. You could have the FPGA application, you could have the web front end application, you could even um, submit it for adding to the marketplace on web attire and other people could download your web attire application. So it's quite a flexible board. Um, it's quite interesting. I've had it for a few years and I haven't really had a chance to make use of all of its features, but as I'm in lockdown, I thought I'd have a go at it. Um, that's my little introduction to the web I'll have different videos to show you all the different other features later on.